Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. And so far on this channel, we've been able to take a closer look at a variety of classes from the War Within Alpha, with classes like Monks, Druids, Paladins, and Evokers getting some new fundamental updates, but even more class changes are on the horizon, with new announcements coming from Mages as well as Warlocks. A good portion of our favorite classes are looking to get massive talent overhauls, while others are going to get some smaller changes, though every single one of them is going to come out stronger in the War Within, thanks to the new sets of hero talents, which have been confirmed to be an evergreen system that is meant to carry on forward into future expansions. But before we can even take a look at some of the hero talents, I first want to go over yet another class, seeing a big bulk of changes from the most recent build of War Within Alpha. And go over how the class of Warrior is looking better than ever, with the fantastic class talent tree redesign, as well as resource changes coming to the specs of Arms and Fury. But right before we get into yet another class update in the War Within Alpha, most of you guys watching these kind of update videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you remind, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you're watching these videos anyway. Especially if you want to get more regular content regarding Dragonflight Patch 10.26, 10.27, Season 4, or any of the future War Within updates. When it comes to the class of Warrior, the devs are hoping to accomplish a handful of things. First, they wish to provide warriors with better build options as you talent down the warrior base talent tree. This means they're going to be moving some of the more common build defining and performance based talents towards the center so that you're able to cover on all fronts more easily while moving some of the more niche situation specific talents off to the side where they are more optional rather than mandatory to path through. Quality of life changes are going to make things like Berserker Rage baseline for every single warrior spec but also Shockwave as a talent becomes much much easier to pick up as it moves away from a capstone choice given warriors plenty of disruption focused skills, survival and utilities to pick from. Next, warriors rage economy is going to go through a quite a change in the war within. Currently warriors generate rage way too easily and often have an overflow of rage when spending it actively, which leads to wasteful resources. And as someone who primarily plays arms warrior, I can attest to that. You generate so much rage, a lot of it just ends up being pulled and doesn't necessarily get used effectively. But with warriors generating less rage, the rage cost of certain abilities is also being adjusted to make sure that the base gameplay and the rotation for each spec isn't disrupted. Overall, the new warrior class still looks a little bit better put together, and I'm a big fan of just how the restructured things. You will still see a lot of the familiar elements such as the AoE Fear, Thunderclap, Stormbolt, now Shockwave, but also a lot of the common passive options that a lot of warriors are used to, so it shouldn't feel overall that you're missing out on any of the important talents or are giving up any of your favorites in the process. As for the individual warrior specs, we got the Arms Warrior. And when it comes to arms, this is the spec that's going to be the most affected by the rage generation changes. But because the spec is so centered around building and spending rage as quickly as possible, with things like tactician, anger management, as well as test of might windows, warriors are going to see quite a bit of a talent adjustment for war within. This leads to arms warriors getting the most reductions when it comes to rage costs for a good portion of their abilities. And the main goal here is to keep rage management for arms warriors an interesting aspect rather than it being a feature that just happens passively all on its own. With arms getting probably some of the more impactful build adjustments while also getting additional control over the rage generation. We see new talents such as Ravager making a return to the arms warrior talent tree as a choice node between that and Bladestorm. With Ravager fitting the Arms Warrior playstyle a little bit better than Bladestorm, especially when it comes to PvE content. Certain benefits of other talents are now being baked in into some of the earlier pickups, with improved overpower granting you that second charge of overpower without necessarily having to talent into a Dreadnought. The talent of finishing blows causes overpower to generate additional rage when used against low health targets to give warriors a bit more control over rage generation. Storm of Swords has been adjusted where it now gives Whirlwind a chance to reduce the rage cost of your next Whirlwind instead of buffing its effectiveness but also its rage cost. This also includes a reduction to rage cost for a lot of the Arms Warrior abilities with majority of them getting somewhere between 10 rage cost reduction and even 20 rage cost reduction in some cases. Also, a very popular talent for Arms Warrior Warlord Stormwind will no longer proc off of Colossus Smash. 
which seems like a nerf at first, but the devs are hoping that this change will open up more build avenues for arms warriors going forward. Specifically, if you're not a big fan of playing the Test of Might Rage Cycle Warrior playstyle, but you still want some kind of a faster paced Colossus Smash window for your warrior, which you could then pair with Colossus together with In for the Kill, as the haze buff for In for the Kill will now last for the entire duration of Colossus Smash. This can be combined together with spiteful serenity and even blunt instruments, which should hopefully create a new avenue for arms warriors to branch out to different talent trees. Up next, we have Fury Warriors, and all throughout Dragonflight, Fury Warriors develop certain distinct builds over that expansion cycle. A lot of the popular Fury Town builds ended up specializing a little bit too much into specific abilities. You basically had either two builds, one either fully focused on spamming Bloodthirst as much as possible, or a Rage and Blow focused build. And whichever of those two abilities that was favored by your current build usually meant that the other ability was for the most part minimized if not completely eliminated out of your rotation. And the devs feel like going into War Within that Fury Warrior works best when it uses their entire toolkit and want to have Rage and Blow and Bloodthirst to remain a valuable and a core ability to the Fury Warrior, no matter the build that you end up running. They also want to experiment with some of the new ways for Fury Warriors to be able to enhance the Enrage buff windows. As for the Fury Warrior talents, we see abilities such as Defensive Stands become now learned by default for all Fury Warriors, so that all Furies have access to a momentary defensive at all times, similar to how Arms and Protection Warriors operate. For Fury, we have a new talent called Powerful Enrage, which causes the Enrage buff to increase the damage of your abilities by an additional 15%, and Enrage duration is slightly increased. The sound is now going to rest on the same choice node as Frenzied Enrage, giving you a choice between a fast-paced Frenzy talent playstyle or a more powerful but less carpal tunnel inducing Powerful Enrage playstyle. Just like Arms Warriors, Fury Warriors are now going to have access to both Ravager as well as Blazestorm as a choice node, which may end up being a less popular choice for a lot of Fury Warriors since you're usually so focused on spamming as many Bloodthirst and Rage and Blows, and in the past expansions, a lot of Fury Warriors found themselves barely using Blazestorm as an actual viable ability outside of pure AoE situations. That being said, for PvP content, this is a fantastic new utility that will give Warriors a way to dampen enemy CCs as Bladestone makes immune to crowd control during its duration, but it also matches well with the Slayer playstyle as it has direct links to the ability of Bladestone and execute interactions. Frenzied Flurry is another talent that's seen a few changes as it's now being baked in into single-minded Fury talent directly. Still, it's going to be very hard to tell if SMF Fury specs will ever make a return, like a full-on return, since Titan's Grip and Two-Handed Weapons, at least for this last expansion, have generally been some of the more stronger, more viable options. But at least it's nice to know that specking into a single-minded Fury Warrior build will only take one talent point instead of two, which may give it a little bit more leverage, depending on the weapon choices available in War Within. Also, as part of the change to the rotational restructure for Fury Warriors, talents such as Annihilator and Storm of Swords are being removed outright, to make sure that Rage and Blow and Bloodthirst remain your core base abilities of Warrior gameplay. This does remove the possibility of an auto-attack fueled Warrior entirely out of War Within, which is a playstyle that a number of Warriors actually enjoyed as it offered a difference in rotation and incorporated abilities such as Slam as part of your basic gameplay. That being said, it was always difficult to balance out this auto attack and annihilate Fury Warrior build as well as slam, rage and blow, bloodthirst and all of these abilities together. But the one thing that a lot of players liked about the annihilator build is it slowed down the rotation of a Fury Warrior. As it is a fast paced spec that includes a lot of APM, you're spamming a lot of abilities but if let's say you've had a hand injury or maybe you're getting up in the age where it's actually very difficult for your hands to keep up with the spam, the slower auto attack playstyle made Fury Warriors a little bit easier for players to get into. But this is why Powerful Enraged Talent was introduced, as an alternative way to play Annihilator without removing Rage Blow and Bloodthirst out of your rotation. 
Powerful Rage is the answer for a slower, more powerful Fury Warrior build that's very similar to the original Annihilator, whereas warriors that like that fast-paced playstyle of spamming your abilities will likely be playing Frenzied and Rage, but we'll see exactly how these abilities come out when it comes to the overall class tuning. But as of right now, this is going to cover the entire list of warrior specific changes coming out to the alpha of the war within. And I definitely want to double back to the class of warrior to take a closer look at every single one of the specs and even the hero talents coming out with the war within once we get access to the alpha or beta of the next expansion. But for now, I want to thank all of you so much for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what your thoughts are on the warrior in the comments down below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single video and live stream, we have a link to our Discord community channel, probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or hang out with the rest of the community to discuss some of the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you all so much for watching this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.